Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm excited about this video tonight because we're drinking a high-end, premium Jim Beam product. And I know what you're thinking. I must have misspoke because there is no high-end, premium Jim Beam product. But I disagree, and let's talk about what I have here and get it. I went to Kentucky in July, and I did the Jim Beam tour and tasting, which was awesome. Afterwards, I went through the gift shop there and bought a couple bottles, including this one. And I went there not intending to buy this bottle, and I ponied up some real money for this. And I think you could kind of call that a tater move. Just seeing a bottle just out of hype, you go ahead and buy it. Is that a tater move? I didn't pay above MSRP. I paid what they charged at the distillery for it, and pretty happy with my purchase. And let's talk about the specs and stats of this whiskey and then get it and see if this was worth the cash I paid for it and if it actually could be considered a premium Jim Beam product. If you don't recognize this box, it's the Jim Beam Lineage Batch 1. Let's see, it's a collaboration between father and son, Fred No, and my buddy Freddie No. I just, I jest about that. I've met Freddie No twice and he signed my box and bottles and then we. He came to Tampa for a stumping for the Claremont Steep, and I had him sign a couple bottles for me there too, and we had just talked a little bit. So I joke about being buddies with Fred, Freddie, but anyway. So lineage collaboration between Fred and Freddie No. I'm gonna read a couple of specs and stats here. It's selected from the second floor of Rack House K, which to be honest with you, I don't know enough about the different rack houses to know if there's something special about the Rack House K or not. And I was thinking about the second floor, does that matter? I don't know how tall that Rack House is. And my understanding, I mean, maybe it makes sense they drew this from a lower level as it is a 15 year product and they didn't maybe want the top level for such a, uh, a mature whiskey as it would be even way more mature and there would be a lot of fluctuation in the temperature and humidity and all that stuff in the higher uh, levels of a, of a rack house. So somewhat it makes sense to me that they would draw this from floor two. This is the same typical Jim Beam mash bill, 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. This is 15 years old and 111 proof non-chill filtered. So I did pour myself just a little pour of the white label. Cheers. Mm. Same mash bill, quite a bit younger. Lower proof as well. I think it's 80. It's 80 proof. So I haven't had any uh, just a wide label for a while. I just wanted to kind of refresh my palate, and it's as I remembered. Nice flavor profile, but it's pretty thin, pretty weak. Uh, there's no heat, there's no power with that 80 proof. So I just kind of wanted to, I haven't had any white label in a few weeks, so. I'm pretty excited about this bottle and I did open it last night for the first time and had a little tasting of it, but let's get to it. Cheers again. That is the same nose as the white label. It's the same palette. I just get a quick sip to just kind of wet my, wet my appetite here. I'm gonna nose it and then come back to sip it some more, but it's that same Jim Beam profile times 10. It's that nutty, there's very sweet, caramel forward, and just a hint of citrus there on the nose. There's some heat on it. It's not a lot, it's pretty subtle. We, uh, we opened five different whiskeys last night and this was the third uh, highest in proof. And I think it was one of the lowest as far as uh, that heat on the nose, just really nice. I like it. So, so I can't do this without, of course, talking about this box. So when I say it was a premium Jim Beam product, I really mean it. I mean, look at this, such a nice presentation. 
when I was at the distillery and I bought this. It was signed, I think, by Fred, but not by Freddie. And so I had him sign the box and then I wanted him to sign the bottle as well and I couldn't get the bottle out. And so Freddie was there, I think he was a little bit laughing at me, but it's such a nice product. And to get this out, you just reach in. The easiest way is to pull on the top of the bottle and this little, I don't know if you can see this here, it's got a cut out there for the top of the lid and it holds the bottle into the product and it's, it's either magnetized on here or on the top of the box here and it stays in by it's magnetized so it's very nice it's got a little uh little some words there by fred and freddie nice uh well maybe that's kind of felt again more words by fred and freddie got the nice picture there on the back and i'll put this on the screen just a really really nice presentation i have some other whiskeys that come in pretty nice little boxes. The Middleton, very rare. Uh, even the Booker's, it's a nice looking little presentation. So, but this one definitely is very premium. It's it reminds me of the Lux Row, the 12 year um, bottle. Just a big square imposing, a fingerprint magnet. It's a nice little uh, screw top here. I mean, that's, that's pretty legit. So, all in all, this is a very nice presentation. This product was actually created for the global travel retail. Think of like the premium products you see in the duty-free shops at the airports. And I think this does a really nice job of presenting itself. And I could see your, I could see this at the airport. I've never seen this at an airport, but I could see it being there and someone picking that up. For the first year or so, Jim Beam did not release this at the distillery, and I believe last year they started uh, selling it there at the gift shop. All right, let's get it. Jim Beam Lineage Batch One. Mm. There's no question of the heat on there. It's not overpowering or overwhelming but it's very present. You're aware that this is a higher proof whiskey, 111. That's a very nice proof. Some people say that 110 is the perfect proof and I'm not gonna disagree with that. Well, perfect, maybe I'll disagree with that, but uh, 111 certainly is very compelling. It's a very nice looking whiskey. It looks dark and rich and it tastes dark and rich. It tastes compelling. It's those same, it's sweetness with some of that, just some spice, just enough to balance out the sweetness. Very rich in caramel, and it is dark and delicious. The mouthfeel is yummy. It just coats the tongue nice, and it's just warming. This is, I think, an excellent whiskey. I enjoyed it last night. We opened five whiskeys, so, of the five we had last night, they were all Jim Beam products. I had had before the Baker's 13. I never had a bottle, though I have one now. I've had a couple pours of that and I really enjoyed it. I also had had the Frankfurt, the Hardin's Creek Frankfurt, and we finally opened my bottle that I have. I've only had a couple pours at the distillery and I finally opened my bottle last night. And then we opened the Booker's and I've never had any Booker's or Little Book until last night. We opened the Booker's Mighty Fine Batch and the Little Book in retrospect, and we opened the Lineage. So I, I shared all this with my friend John last night. That video will be coming out in a few weeks, and I'm gonna go through each one of those individual whiskeys and do kind of a more detailed review. The video last night was uh, certainly not a technical, not that I'm super technical, and certainly not a technical review. It was just a couple friends drinking some expensive Jim Beam products. But of those five whiskeys, the lineage was my favorite. I just really enjoyed overall the flavor profile. I think it's very balanced. It's nice, rich sweetness with just enough spice and a great mouthfeel, a nice amount of heat. And I think it is complex and you can keep, it's, it has that basic Jim Beam profile that we like but it has some more depth and complexity. And I think I say that in a lot of my videos, but I feel like this one has it 
a great viscosity and overall an excellent product. So I was thinking about this today as I was preparing for the video and I was thinking this is one of the best bourbons that I've ever had. And again, I've only been drinking whiskey for maybe four years, 2019 we turned it on. Uh, maybe we had a pour or two before then, but really between 19 and 20, uh, 2019, 2020, I, I might have had, uh, you know, 15 or 20 different whiskeys in those two years total. And it really wasn't until mid late 2022 that I really started turning on and drinking more and more whiskeys. I do feel like this is one of the best bourbons that I've had. I think it would be do it would be great to do a kind of a premium extra aged bourbon blind. Think maybe the uh, Frankfurt. It's uh, 17 years old. Uh, the Booker's, again, I had those last night, but it wasn't a blind. The Russell's 13. I have a Knob Creek 18. I'm looking for the 15. Apparently they put that out occasionally. I have a 12, looking for the 15, and I have the 18. But maybe the 18, the Lineage, a Booker's R2, and uh, a Frankfurt. That would be a pretty nice um, premium bourbon blind, I think. And I really think the Lineage will run with all of those whiskeys, no problem. And so now the question is, should you buy this whiskey? I mean, $250 is, that's a lot of coin. I had no question about it. Depending on if you're really a bourbon aficionado, if you, obviously, if you like Jim Beam products, I think you're gonna pick this up. It is, as far as I can tell, distillery only. You can buy them online, but you're paying majorly inflated prices. You know, if you're gonna pay those prices, just go to Kentucky and go do the tour and buy yourself a bottle there instead of paying someone who went to the distillery and bought four or five boxes instead of paying him extra. Uh, just go buy one at the, uh, at the distillery. Am I glad I have this in my collection? I am, definitely. I think it is a exceptional whiskey. It's, and I'm already planning to go back to Kentucky in February. If I see this, if it's still on the shelf there, when I go back in February, I'm gonna buy another box and put it on this shelf. I'm do wondering, like, do you know, are there plans to have a batch two? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's been around for a while now. So they, um, they've been doing this for a few years. You know, you would think they would maybe have changed the batches each year, but I mean, how many, how many barrels do they have in Warehouse K, Rick, Rackhouse K floor two? I don't know. But anyway, when I go back in February, if they have another bottle, I'm gonna pick it up and put it on my shelf. That's how much I think about this whiskey. And if you're gonna pick one up, I think that's a decision that you have to make. But anyway, my guys, that's it for tonight. Look for some videos coming up uh, pretty soon of the Booker Little Book and the Frankfurt. I really tried to get a Hardin's Crink uh, Claremont and Boston. I have not been able to find those. I think it really would be great to just compare those three all at the same time. How cool would that be? But anyway, I hope uh, you're doing well and turn those pages, my friends, and stay thirsty. Cheers. <laughs>